Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode number 123 is please read your pattern before you start. But before we get to that, I have an opinion and a little something to show you. This was found in the hand wheel of one of the machines that came in for repair here. Wonder why it wasn't turning well. Cautionary tale why I'm showing it to you. Don't leave bobbins with thread on it or spools of thread uh, on it near your hand wheel where the hand wheel can then as it turn pick up the thread. That's what happened with this. Not sure why she didn't notice that the bobbins were getting empty after she had sewed a project, but that's the story. And now that I've shown it to you, I can throw it away. So stay tuned for the winner of the giveaway and the announcement of the next giveaway. But now let's get to my opinion. Rob Appel recently did a video on getting an accurate quarter inch every single time. And while I love Rob Appel, and I think he does great videos and promotes the craft of quilting. He, there's one flaw in his um, methodology. So the, what he was showing was how to find the quarter inch on your machine. And he used a guide like this that gets screwed into your machine. And you have to have it in the right spot so that when you're fabric is pushed up against the guide that it will be give you the accurate quarter inch and he used the method that I teach everybody is you take three one and a half inch strips sew them together and then press and measure and the width of the whole strip set should be three and a half inches exactly and the center strip should be an inch exactly and that's what he did and then it took him three tries to get this adjusted correctly. He did get it. Um, that's a good thing. So I see people use these kind of guides to do that. And I see people use a piece of tape, put it on their machine, and line up to the piece of tape. And I've seen people use things like a stack of post-it notes, anything that gives you the guide. Well, that works when you don't have to move these. If you have, have a top-loading bobbin, you then have to pick up your post-it note stack or your guide or your piece of tape. Or what if you want to do applique and you need to, to do a blanket stitch? You don't want the guides there so you take them off so now the next time that you go to do your piecing that you need your accurate quarter inch you have to then try again three times and do a test my objection to this method is if you have to put something additional that's not part of your machine on top of your bed where you're sewing then you have to redo it every single time. And that to me is not only not efficient, but it would drive me crazy. To me, the better option is having a machine. Again, it's always the right equipment, the machine that has everything on it that you need. Here's the tray of the Bernina that I use. And you can see here, there's quarter inch mark on either side of the center. There's also five eighths inch mark, perfect for um, garment sewers. There's also, this is the needle plate, and there's lines here. That's my quarter inch mark. There's a quarter inch mark, a half inch mark on the um, needle plate. Also, there's a quarter inch foot. In fact, there's several quarter inch feet for the Berninas. And I use the 97D because I can um, engage the dual feed. 
but this edge here is at a quarter inch from the needle because the needle's in the center. So when I'm sewing, I have three places I can look. I can look on my, on my tray, I can look on my needle plate, and I can look at my foot. I would say 90% of the time I look at this little mark on the needle plate. But it's not going to move. When, once I know where my quarter inch is and I know I can do it, I don't have to re-figure out where it is when, after I change a bobbin. I don't have to re-figure out where it is when I go to do um, a zigzag stitch or a blanket stitch. I can do that and come right back and put on the correct foot and continue on with my quarter inch. Um, there's also a guide foot with the Berninas that you can get. But this, you can put your fabric up against here, just like we did with the screw-in guide. But when you don't need the guide, you just take off this foot and put on a different foot. So I would argue that you shouldn't have to figure out where your quarter inch is every single time you start sewing. Now, there's nothing wrong with after you sew a strip set to press and measure and make sure you're still on point. But um, you, to me, you shouldn't have to do it every single time you start sewing. So that's my opinion. Let's get to today's episode. Recently, a good customer of mine came in and asked for help with a pattern. And she showed me what she had, and she had a um, pieced quilt top with straight, a straight setting. And the directions in the pattern had her take her quilt that was pieced straight across, squares in the regular straight setting and cut top of the corner here, 45 degree angle to here, and then cut from here down to the corner here. And then you turned the pieces so that it became on point rather than straight setting. Well, I looked at this and I said, why would you do this? And it just makes no sense to me. So they had you stay stitch this, which makes sense to do that so that your bias edges weren't moving and you stay stitched here and then you did your cutting. So this A piece gets flipped so that these two bias edges here become these two outside edges here. This B piece, this bias edge here becomes here on the outside. And the two bias edges on the C piece become these two outside edges. So as soon as you see a pattern that says, take your bias edges and put them on the outside edge of your quilt, the alarm bells should go off and say, I'm not going to do that. And I suggested to my customer that maybe she just wanted to leave it set straight. And she said, but I like it so much better on point. And I said, the next time you make this, just make it on point to start with. This is her actual quilt that I quilted for. She's going to pick it up later today or maybe tomorrow morning. But the major flaw in this, besides the bias edges, because you have actually stay stitched them, so they're not moving. And then you put on a border, so they're, they're not going to move. The major issue, and we'll put a close-up picture of this on the screen, is that all these edge pieces, the points are cut off. And they're cut off by necessity. And I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Because these pieces were cut straight down the middle of a total block that looked like this. Once you cut down straight down the middle, you don't have seam allowance. And that's what happens to every single one of these outside edges. Now, if you are going to do this um, technique, not, not if you're going to do this technique, that was wrong. If you want to take the squares and set them on point and you want the, the, the setting triangles pieced, that's what I was trying to say. You need to build 
the pieces. And all you need to do is sew together the required number of squares, which since she had 16, it's three, then a half square triangle, two, then a half square triangle, one half square triangle, and half square triangle. And that gives you half a block. Now, if you had cut straight down the center here, this is where this cut would be, right here up to the edge of these corners, and no seam allowance. Now, when you build your own, you see how I've got a quarter inch here on each one? You've got a quarter inch. Now, the one thing I want to caution you is if you are going to put a sashing or a frame on here, you need to make it longer than this. And why do you need to do that? Because look what happens. Let me do this side. If I stop here and this is even and you want to cut, you don't have enough. You have to make sure that this is long enough for you when you cut at the 45 degree angle, you have enough of a frame. So put that in the back of your head. If you're going to use piecing to make your setting triangles and you need a frame, make sure it's long enough. And if you have ever done this quilt behind me here, I, you don't see the whole thing, but I did it with scraps. It's boxed in from Julie Herman. And the original pattern did have these all pieced. And the first one I did, I did piece them. But when I was doing this, I kind of ran out of the right color of squares. I wasn't going to have enough to piece them all. So I decided just to do a solid um, triangle for here. But here you can see these needed frames. So you still can piece them and put them in there and it will work great. Just remember to build your pieces yourself. Don't take a square and cut it in half and on your frame, make sure it's long enough. This book, I don't think is in print anymore, but um, I really like this pattern to use for scraps. I think she used a jelly roll actually when she originally made it, but I, I definitely love it for scraps. And my customer of course does too, because they're pretty similar other than I have an extra frame in the center. But that's the episode of please read your pattern. And that's before you start. People come in and they want help with something and if I had seen it from the beginning, I would have directed them to do something different. So again, before you start, let's get to the winner of the giveaway. This is the Christmas panel quilt. And the winner is Chinga Chaguk 9718. It's C-H-I-N-G-A-C-H-G-O-O-K. 9718. Please send me your address to quiltersheaveninc at gmail.com so I can get that out to you. And the giveaway for this week, I kind of forgot I had this, and it's really quite lovely. This is the center of a block of a month from Swirly Girls. It's from several years ago. I don't remember how many months worth this is. I think it might have been, I don't know, five. Um, might have been four. Um, it measures 40 by 48 and a half. And the only reason I didn't finish it was I was making it for a store sample to do a block of the month and no one signed up for it. So it didn't, I just never had the time to finish it. So I ended up just putting all the fabric um, into fat quarters to, to, for the quilt and just sold the fabric in the store. So I never even really had bolts of this fabric. I just had the kit. So if you would like to finish this quilt, 
please enter to win, you want to like, comment, and subscribe. And in your comment, put swirly girls and you will be entered to win. That's my episode. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, happy sewing.